it is my great privilege to welcome to Talk Nation Radio this week, Tarek Kauf and Ken Mayers. They are speaking with us from Ireland, where they are out on bail, but forbidden to leave the country. Tarek Kauf was a U.S. Army paratrooper from 19. 19- 59 to 62. He's a member of Veterans for Peace, the managing editor of Peace in Our Times, VFP's quarterly newspaper, and was a member of the VFP National Board of Directors for six years. Tarek has organized and led delegations of veterans to Okinawa, Jeju Island, Palestine, Ferguson, Standing Rock, and Ireland. He's currently awaiting trial along with Ken for exposing U.S. war crimes and the violation of Irish neutrality at Shannon Airport, which we will be talking about. Ken Mayers started as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Marine Corps and rose to the rank of major, but resigned his commission in disgust with American foreign policy at the end of 1966 and returned to the University of California at Berkeley, where he earned a PhD in political science. He's been a peace and justice activist ever since and has served six years like Tarek, on the Veterans for Peace Board of Directors, five of them as National Treasurer. Ken and Tarek, welcome to Talk Nation Radio. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Great to be here with you. Thanks for being on. Thanks for being in Ireland and what you're doing there. Uh, Tell us what the problem is with Shannon Airport. Well, the problem with Shannon Airport is rooted in the fact that Ireland claims to be a neutral nation. There are obligations on neutral nations that are imposed by the Hague Convention, by Geneva Conventions, by the UN Treaty on Torture and so forth. Uh, And among those obligations, anytime a belligerent crosses neutral territory, the government of the neutral territory is responsible to detain the belligerents, to confiscate whatever militant materials they are taking with them, uh, and to hold those belligerents uh, at a distance from the area of belligerency until the belligerence is over. Since 2001, approximately 3 million U.S. military personnel have passed through Shannon on their way to our murderous wars in the Middle East, in clear violation of Irish neutrality. The Irish government has failed to enforce its neutrality policy. So we were asked by Veterans for Peace Ireland and by Shannon Watch and by the um, Peace and Neutrality Alliance of Ireland to come over and help raise awareness of the issue here. That's what brought us to Ireland a couple of days before St. Patrick's Day this year. There were eight of us at all who came over uh, the two of us were the ones who decided to go onto the airfield itself rather than just protest in front of the terminal. Uh, we were arrested by the uh, Garda, as the police here are called, taken to Shannon jail overnight, and then were arraigned the next day in, in a certain district court in Ennis. And the judge then remanded us to Limerick Prison for 12 days. And we've been here since, which is about a little over five months now, and we'll go on for probably a while. And and what have you been uh, up to since getting out of prison? Well, um, we have been interviewed on uh, Irish uh, national TV, Uh, We have been interviewed for radio programs. We have done uh, some talks that have been set up for us. We have dropped large banners over highways and byways uh, wherever we could. Uh, We work uh, together with other activists here in Ireland who are also opposing U.S. war making and the corruption of Irish neutrality. So we've been quite busy. Even when we go out walking in the street or when we go to town or we go to Dublin, wherever we go, it seems like people recognize us. Well, they see the hat and that veterans for peace. And so people stop us, they speak to us and 
we have, uh, oh, I have one right here, hold on. And we have these um, brochures that we've printed up. Alan Davidson was, my partner was kind enough to do them. They open up their trifold. And uh, usually get, we get into a conversation about, you know, people ask, sometimes people ask us just out of curiosity, because the Irish are very friendly and they like to talk. And they say, oh, are you guys here on vacation? <laughs> And then we have to say, well, it's not exactly a vacation. We love Ireland. We love the people. But it's not exactly a vacation. And then the conversation ensues, and we wind up uh, usually giving out one of these, telling them a little bit of our story. And the people, almost without exception, are so supportive. You know, even if they don't know us, and many do know who we are. They say, oh, I saw you guys on television. Good work, lads. And sometimes the husband will say, oh yes, my wife told me about you. Yeah, uh -huh. and uh, people give us spontaneous donations. We've been uh, uh, bought meals. We, the people in Ireland are for neutrality, but they understand that they, like us, are dealing with a government that is not reflecting the will of the people. They understand that. And it's, it's a shame because Ireland has done so much and Irish history is so rich with so many things, you know, resistance against British occupation for 700 years. They have been at war. They understand the, what the violence of war does and they don't want it. And the government is not reflecting their, their will or their views. So people are sympathetic to us and very supportive. Yeah, and one of, the, one of the ramifications of allowing the violation of neutrality to go on is that it loses their standing. They are historically been a provider of peacekeeping forces, have been respected as a neutral party in belligerent situation, particularly in Africa and in the Middle East uh, and in uh, Eastern Europe as well. Uh, and they're in danger of losing that position because of the violation of neutrality. You know, we had uh, Irish peace activist Barry Sweeney, who you know, on this program, and I asked him, when you tell people in Ireland that you want to end all wars and sign them up to help end all wars, do they tell you, as they do in the U.S. and Canada, that war is just inevitable and natural, if not glorious and, and to be celebrated? And he said, similar to what, what you all just said, that the Irish people have known war up close and are sick and tired of it and don't think it's the solution, but they have no idea that there are US troops going through Shannon Airport. They have to be, be told. So what I'm wondering, when you talk to all these people you were describing, talking to, before you talk to them, do they know what the US military is doing at Shannon Airport or are you informing them of that? Well, the typical answer is, oh, is that still going on? Uh, they, they were aware of it. Uh, there was quite a resistance to it uh, about 2005 and there were major protests at that time at Shannon. And so some government made some announcements about, you know, we're going to enforce the neutrality. They never have, but the public says, oh, is that still going on? And, and uh, uh, David, some people are well aware of it. Some people are well aware. Some did not know at all, and we helped to inform them about it. When they hear about it, they're opposed to it, you know, they're opposed to the U.S. doing that uh, almost exclusively without, and maybe some of it is people being polite to us, but I think it's real also, you know, they're sincere people. Um, so some of them don't know, most of them know, some of them like Ken, uh, you know, one know is it's still going on, but it's an educational process and it's a process of involving people in their own destiny. And I like to point out uh, the fact that we are living in very, very critical times. We do not have unlimited time to fix these issues. And this is a, this is a doorway. This whole thing at Shannon Airport with the Irish is a doorway towards peace or towards continued war. E either way, you're going to go through that doorway. And right now it's heading towards continued war and it can stop. It can go the other way. And if the Irish stand up to the U.S., you know, the Irish, they love America. 
They love Americans. That's pretty universal. You know, and, and many, many uh, Irish people are living in America. So there's that connection, right? More, and their descendants much more than in Ireland. <laughs> They're more over right, here than exactly. over there. Exactly. So my thought is, if Ireland somehow can stand up and say to America, look, America, we love you. We love Americans. We don't really love your wars, and we don't really want to be part of them. And we have a tradition of neutrality. So we're going to have to insist on that. And we can no longer allow you to, to uh, penetrate Irish uh, airspace with your warplanes or to refuel at Shannon uh, Airport with your troops and weapons and, and also with your prisoners uh, headed towards black sites that has been gone through Shannon. So we can't do that. If Ireland did that, do you realize it sends a message to the entire world that you can stand up to this bully. You can assert your own integrity. You can stand up for peace. And that's why, you know, even if it's a long shot, that's why Ken and I are here. That's why we came here. That's why we believe so much in what we're doing. I think it's a great goal. And, and then the question would be which country is next or which base is next. Uh, it, would, it could certainly start something rolling. Um, as you know, uh, Ken Mayers and Tarek Kauf, we, we tried to put up billboards by Shannon Airport and around uh, that area of Ireland saying US troops out of Shannon Airport and were strictly forbidden from doing it uh, on the basis of the content. It was to be censored. Uh, so we've now put up billboards uh, promoting, or they're going up now, uh, promoting the upcoming conference we'll be having, No War 2019, uh, which people can find at worldbeyondwar.org. And we are thrilled that the two of you will be there. Uh, and we're, put, we're putting ads in a bunch of newspapers. Uh, and some of them were saying US troops out of Shannon and they're allowing it uh, to our surprise. Uh, as ads in newspapers, but it seems the topic is generally censored, generally kept out of the media, but that you guys have managed to get it in a little bit and to make your own media. <laughs> how, how has that been going? Well, you know, we were inspired by your billboards and we created essentially a mobile billboard. We have a, a banner that's uh, uh, about, well, it's roughly 15 feet by eight feet. Uh, and we hang that from overpasses, uh, particularly overpasses near Shannon. Uh, and the response we get from cars going under is pretty good. Tarek has measured the traffic flow. Um, the busiest place we've done it is in a overpass just outside of Dublin, where he counted, what, 6,000 cars an hour? Yeah, 6,000 cars an hour. I do you the math. Counted you counted 6,000 cars. <laughs> yeah, what I do, listen, I don't count one to people all the way up to 6,000. What I do is I count how long it takes for 100 cars to go by. And then yeah. I do the math, right? Okay. So that, that works out pretty good. You know, it's like random sampling, 100 cars, how long, do the math. And it comes out to 6,000 cars plus or minus uh, per hour that are driving by uh, at that particular location. Other locations were between three and 4,000 cars per hour. So we usually stay at a location for anywhere from two to three hours. So that's a lot of cars that come by. We get a lot of honks, you know. Uh, I don't think we've gotten any fingers, you know. Uh, there must be a welcome change. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and uh, I want to say something else. Well, but I want to say something about the media. Yeah, go ahead. I want to say something about the media. We have noticed, and Ed Horgan, who's who you know, Ed Horgan. Sure. Uh, he's I've also been on this program. He's Ireland. He was in the Irish military for 22 years. Retired as a commandant. Was on many peacekeeping missions. He's a very strong advocate for peace. Uh, Ed, Ed has noticed that since we came here which is a little unusual. Two US veterans arrested at Shannon Airport. The media has kind of opened up. We're getting letters in to the editor about Shannon, about our situation, not just from us, but from people in the States, from people here in Ireland. So we've seen an opening. And also your conference, the World Beyond War Conference, is another opening. So I feel that there are people in the media who are not quite as corrupt as 
our media in the States. We're not quite as bought and sold as our media in the States. Let me put it that way. Maybe that's not too, as kind as I should be, but you get the gist. And I feel that they are receptive to this. It's not open totally yet. The door's not open totally. It should be front page news, but there's something. We were, we were at a music festival in Drogheda a couple of weeks ago, one of the biggest events in Ireland. They expected half a million people there that week. Uh, and we were on the streets and people are stopping us. The hats again, the, hat, the hats are magical. Uh, and Tarek was interviewed by a, a TV reporter or no, I guess local radio station. Local radio station. Local radio station. You what the hats are for people who can't see you on the radio? Yeah, right. <laughs> that you, yeah, you, let me just finish the story and we'll describe the hats, the magical hats. Um, so he's interviewed and he's getting really passionate as he often does, particularly about the murder of children, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and about America's role as the most dangerous country in the world and so forth. They did it. He did a great job. And at the end of it, the reporter kind of laughed and said, I'm not sure how much of this is going to get by my editors, but we'll try. <laughs> yeah, typical. Yeah. And it's interesting in the media, as Tarek said, the, um, we have several friends who write letters to the editors, and Tarek has had letters to the editors in the paper. Jean March from Portland, Oregon had a terrific letter in one of the papers. There are several papers which take letters all the time, but in their news reporting, among other things, they, the Irish law prohibits them discussing uh, cases before the court uh, in terms of the issues that are before the court. Uh, so that we get some coverage kind of on the, the human interest side of these two vets who are here, and, uh, but they can't talk about what are the, what's the issue before the court. There was a human interest story in one of the papers, The Examiner, nice little story about the fact that I had to postpone my honeymoon, which was scheduled to begin on April 22nd. And they had a nice human interest thing, not a word about the case. There was also in the Irish Times. Well, well, let's stop for one second and just tell people what hats you're wearing because uh, because we just doing these videos for YouTube well, with us and, and yeah, we are on the radio. They can't see them. Oh, you can't see it on the radio. You have to look more closely. <laughs> yeah, it, it says you can tell what it says, David. See. Uh, yes, these are Veterans for Peace hats that look like military hats and have uh, badges on them. Uh, little medals on the front of them, uh, it, but they, uh, that's, they, a, they that's a parachutist badge. And Ken's has his USMC uh, insignia and his major rank on his. And then it also has the DFP uh, helmet with the white dove in it. A helmet there. with a dove with an olive branch. There you go. So they look they look official. They look military, but they say veterans for peace, uh, which is the only quasi military thing I like. Uh, and there was also an article in the Irish Times, uh, if I recall correctly, that was all about how you guys liked the prison and what you thought <laughs> of the prison and, and the other prisoners, uh, and not one word about what the hell you were in prison for. Uh, <laughs> and, well, and I thought that was just typical, disgusting media behavior, as one might find in the New York Times or the Washington Post. You're telling me they were legally prevented from reporting on, on what you were in prison for? Well, I think they probably could have reported the charges, but they couldn't write an article kind of evaluating the charges or where it's going and that kind of stuff, because the courts are so clogged here that it's, it's scandalous. <laughs> yeah, but they could have said what you did and why you did it and the fact that there have been protests for years and what's known of what is happening without... Others have. I mean, it's not, it, it's not hard and fast, you know. Uh, others have and it's been in other uh, papers, and some of the letters to the editors. Yeah, letters to the editors do it all the time. Yeah, well, we need to do more of those. So, so you're now going on a walk. Tell us about this walk. It's called Boots on the Ground for Freedom. Two US military veterans walk through Ireland. So what we're doing is we're walking, we're not doing one continuous thousand, thousand mile 
uh, loop. We're walking from place to place. We're actually starting uh, on Saturday, September 7th, from right in front of Limerick Prison, where we were incarcerated. And by the way, I do have to say, I want to say <laughs> that, you know, compared to prisons and jails in the U.S., we were treated pretty well. So I can't, I don't want to complain about that. And the guards, for the most part, even would say, say to us, good work, lads. We support you, you know? So that's interesting. We anyway, won't let you out, but we support you. Yeah. Well, they have to do their job. I, I'm, not a, I'm not against them doing their job. They're supporting families and all that. But I like it that they understand the issue and they understand what we did and why we did it. As did most of the, the other prisoners. So anyway, um, we're, we're walking. We're starting in front of Limerick Prison every day. We'll, we'll walk anywhere up to 15 kilometers on that particular day and we have different locations that we're headed towards and we'll be doing that for the whole month of uh, the rest of the month in September and then we'll see what happens, right? You right. want to say something, Ken? Uh, yeah, well, I'll just add what he said about the guards. It's true of the police as well and we've, we've frequently said that the United States, instead of having Israel, Israelis come and train our police force. They actually should have Ireland come and train our police force. Yeah. It's a yeah. very different relationship between the, the police and the population here. The police are generally, what, what in the U.S. were considered, you know, efforts at, at community policing. And, and one place you're going on your walk, I think it's the final destination, there's a World War II Irish neutrality sign. Can you tell people what that means? Yeah, yeah. In, during World War II, the, in, I think 17 locations along the coast, both the, all around the island, they had these big signs that were large stones that were aggregated so that they spelled out E-I-R-E, -E, Ireland. Uh, and painted white so that aviators from both sides, if they approached Ireland, would see one of these signs because they were strategically located. So if you had a plane at over 10,000 feet, it was almost bound to see one of these signs. And this was to warn them that, hey, this is Ireland. It's a neutral country. Don't drop your bombs here. And in fact, you shouldn't even be flying over it, but that wasn't, uh, as long as they didn't drop bombs, that was okay. There was one time that some bombs did get dropped in Belfast, um, but essentially because of navigation errors, but, but essentially it worked. And of course, after World War II, these things got mostly overgrown by fields, but in the last few years, some of them have been rediscovered and repainted. And so we think it's a great you know, final stop on this particular leg of the journey uh, to reach one of these neutrality signs. Apparently, apparently Donald Trump refers to his property in Ireland as being in the UK. Maybe one of those signs <laughs> ought to go up right uh, near a Trump golf course. Well, well, I think he does have a golf course in, in the UK as well, in Scotland. Yes, but he has some place in Ireland that he yeah, has we've, we've been there. UK. Well, he, what? When he came to visit a couple of months ago, we were up there uh, in Dunbeg protested, and we were uh, we were interviewed by uh, Virgin Media and a couple of, couple yeah, of people Irish interviews. Times and yeah. so on. Um, there's something I, I would like to say, but we, uh, as far as Donald Trump, we know he's not satisfied with the two with the golf course in Ireland and the one in the UK. Now he wants the whole, uh, the whole space of Greenland for an, a golf course. This is what we're dealing with, you know, besides the dangerous elements of, of what he does. Um, I want to say two, two things. We've got just a few minutes, so go ahead. Okay, one thing that people are concerned about, and rightfully so, is that the continued U.S. use of Shannon makes Shannon and Ireland a target, okay? So that's another factor in it. The other factor is the U.S. does not have to use Shannon Airport at all. They have plenty of other places they can use, England, Germany. There are other places where countries are not neutral that they can use, which support uh, the U.S. So they, they don't have to use Shannon. So the question comes up, 
Why are they using Shannon? This is the question that comes up. Do you have the answer, David? Well, I assume that you agree with me that they want every speck of the earth uh, under their thumb. They want complete global domination. And if there's a country that's not collaborating, they want it as a, as a co-conspirator. Uh, I, I think obviously another way in which they don't need Shannon is that they could end the damn wars and not use any place else either. Right. Uh, I, but I you, also hit it, you hit it right on the nose, as I knew you would. That is what they want. They want to make Shannon complicit. Uh, how do you put it, Ken? A member of, of the coalition of the complicit. Yeah. They want to bring. They they don't like it, you know, if somebody is not part of that. So that's another aspect of this thing that uh, people uh, need to be aware of. We we All should right. also note that you guys and our friends at Shannon Watch and other allies have been doing a lot of research about uh, the environmental destruction uh, caused and, and exacerbated by the U.S. military presence at Shannon, and we'll be putting out some information about that between now and the and the conference, October 5th and 6th, uh, which again, people can go to worldbeyondwar.org and, and learn all about that and see a video that, that you two have made and the video of this conversation, which we'll put up there as well. But uh, we've got just, just a couple of minutes left. Uh, are people, are you talking to people about this conference and rally uh, that we'll be doing in October and are they interested? Well, we, we are, and we will be on our walk. We will be doing that. We're going to uh, a, a, a conference uh, about Roger Casement. Uh, folks can look up who he is uh, this weekend, and we'll be distributing the, the uh, uh, postcards, the large postcards about the, uh, the conference. But you, you were talking about the environment, and it's very important for environmental people, environmental activists, to understand how deeply connected the U.S. war machine is with the destruction of the Earth's environment. This is deep and profound and large. And we're gonna discuss that at the, at the conference. That is going to be one of the topics, I know that. So if you're an environmental activist, think about coming because this is an important connection that, that has to be made and has to be exposed. Uh, in, in closing, just a minute left, where should people go other than talknationradio.org? We'll put up all the links we can find, but where should people go? How can they follow what you're doing and, and, and be involved? They can go to stopthesewars.org, stopthesewars.org. There's also a really terrific video on, on Stop These Wars with Claire Daly, Ed Horgan, Ken and myself. He's putting it on his website. Are you putting, and, and also that you go to worldbeyondwar.org. Everything is there on both of those websites. Everything is there. And, and um, All right, Tarek Kauf, thank you. And our other guest has been Ken Mayers. They are both members of Veterans for Peace from the United States, now stuck in beautiful Ireland and doing good work while they're there. Ken and Tarek, thank you for coming on Talk Nation Radio. Thank you, David. Thanks so much, David.